Shalom, shalom, it's the brother Kadash. We want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekha Kadash, double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and honors to all the brothers in this truth. This is um, 2 Maccabees chapter 5, verse 1. It says, About the same time Antioch prepared his second voyage into Egypt, and then it happened that through all the city for a space almost of 40 days, there were seen horsemen running in the air and clothed in gold and armed with um, laces like a band of soldiers. And the troops of the horsemen in array encountering and running one against another with shaking of shields and multitude of um, pikes and drawing swords and casting of darts and glittering of golden ornaments and harnesses of all sorts. So what they seen is like they said, almost 40 days, there was horsemen running in the air. We know that horses don't fly and run in the air. What it's talking about is chariots, so-called UFOs. And during this time, they were trying to describe what they were seeing to the best of their ability. But we call them so-called UFOs today. Because if you've seen a horseman running in the air, I mean, clothed with gold, arm laces, Band of soldiers, you would say that you would say this UFO is an unidentified flying object flying in the air. You wouldn't be able to identify what it is. So you will probably go off and, you know, try to explain it the best way you can, just like it's explained in Second Maccabees chapter five, and it says, with um, drawing of swords, swords is just weapon, casting darts and glittering of golden or an ornaments, which mean that it was different laser beams and stuff like that, and different lights. But verse four says where every man prayed that the apparition might turn to good because it's these things. People feared these things, feared the chariots the same way Esau does to, to, this, to this day. So it says Pentagon whistleblower warrants of UFO intelligence failure. And it is an intelligence failure, but we're giving you the intelligence behind it. The prophets of the Lord, like I just got done reading what the what they are. Let's let this play. Reporting on this story, we should have spent a lot more time because this could be the most consequential thing to happen to this country, to this world, maybe ever. Yep. In June, the United States government is set to release a public report on everything it knows about UFOs. Lou Elizondo is the former head of the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. He's been on the show a number of times. He just spoke to the New York Post about what that report will show. According to Elizondo, we will find an intelligence failure on the part of the U.S. intel community on the level of 9-11. The last time we had an intelligence failure of this country, a major one, uh, which was 9-11, it took us almost three years to come up with the 9-11 commission report. Okay, it takes a long time. Um, let's just go down the rabbit hole here for a second. Let's just assume this is some sort of adversarial or foreign technology that several decades now has managed to leapfrog us and evade all 18 members of the intelligence community, despite our best human intelligence, signals intelligence, imagery intelligence. Pretty much he's saying it's impossible for it just to be, you know, like a foreign enemy. Yada, 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 right? Um, that would be an intelligence failure uh, that would eclipse just about anything else this country has ever faced. Um, especially if this has occurred for decades, that there's a foreign adversary that can put a nuclear warhead within moments over Washington, D.C. Okay, that's, that's a problem. Yeah, that's a problem. And too few have considered it from that perspective. Nick Pope is a former Ministry of Defense official from the U.K. and perfectly positioned to answer the obvious question, which is, why didn't we see this coming? He joins us now. Nick, thanks so much for coming on. Um, I thought Lou made a very solid point, and I'm embarrassed I hadn't thought of it before, which is this is, among other things, whatever these objects are, a potentially very grave threat to nation states. So where was the intelligence community in warning about this and learning more about it? Where were they? It's an intelligence failure, you know, because like the Lord said, he comes like a thief in the night. That's an intelligence failure. You're not going to know when he comes. You're not going to be expecting it. You know, um, Wisdom of Solomon, Chapter 5, the strangeness of our salvation. What makes it strange? They're not going to know. They're going to have an intelligent failure when it comes to these so-called UFOs. But 
if they just listen and they stop being so prideful, the prophets, we've been telling them exactly what these UFOs are. This is 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 12. Here it goes. And, Eli and um, Elisha saw it and he cried, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel. So he saw it just like people will see a UFO and they start bugging out and crying and they start saying, oh, my God, what is that? Elisha saw it and he cried, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel. That's what it is. Chariot means vehicle. It's a vehicle of Israel. What are they coming for? To save Israel. They're coming for vengeance and to redeem. That's what the Lord is coming back for. Re re vengeance and to redeem. And these chariots are called the chariots of Israel because they're going to get Israel vengeance on the other nations. And they're going to redeem the elect of Israel. It says, in the horsemen thereof, just like we just read in 2 Maccabees, horsemen running in the air. Because the angels control these ufos you say it's little green aliens that's inside the look in the uh, ufos no it's angels of the lord that's controlling these um so-called ufos which are chariots of israel and he saw him no more and he took hold of him uh, of his own clothes and rent them into two pieces here like he said this is a great threat right Which we're going to keep bringing this one out because, I mean, it breaks it down perfect. Like he said, look, this is a great threat. This is Zechariah chapter 5, verse 1. Then I turned and lift up my eyes and looked and behold, a flying row. So nothing was flying during this time. There was no helicopters. There was no planes during the time of Zechariah. So he said, there's a flying row, which you would call so-called UFO today. And he said unto me, what see if thou? And I answer, I see a flying row. So he saw it too. Zachariah saw it, saw it too, just like Elisha did. They both saw the same thing, what the world calls UFOs today. But they're chariots of Israel. He said that um, this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that stilleth shall be cut off as on this side according to it. And everyone that sweareth should be cut off as on this side according to it. And Esau did all these things. And it talks about that in Obadiah chapter 1. Esau did all these things because his hatred against his brother Jacob. So he's going to be cut off. And this is one of the two major curses of Esau. Esau got a lot of different curses coming. Like slavery, like him going into slavery. Um, Psalms 149, his kings being bonded to change, right? Um, but the two major curses is those nuclear weapons. That, that's going to be used on him and the chariots, which are going to be used to fight against him. Revelations chapter 12, second address chapter 13. So he got those two major curses and they're playing dumb when, wanting to act like they don't know, but they know, you know, so those are his two major curses. That's the intelligence failure that you're failing to realize. And we're going to see how this all ends up for you if or if this is all a conspiracy theory. Right. So that must say salvation to the elect. Shalom.